You know, they can, they can reject it all they want, but the fact is we do have a ton of supply here right now, and that doesn't look like it's easing off anytime soon. U.S. production is at a 29-, 30-year high, and that just keeps getting better and better. And in addition to that, the OPEC countries can't get it together to curtail production because they need the revenues right now. So Saudi Arabia has said they're not going to do it. Kuwait has said they're not going to cut production. And recently Iran has said the same thing, that it's not the time. So the supply is there for now. Um, so I don't know where they're coming up with this analysis, and I think it's going to be there for some time now. Okay, you know, you have the supply uh, trends right now have been up, and that's not changing. And as far as demand, you have a couple things going. World demand, for the most part, is down in the U.S. It's flat. And it's not just a matter of a slowdown in the economy. I think part of that has to do with the U.S. here, and not, not only the U.S., but other areas of the world where we're starting to use more and more efficient transportation fleets. So that's creating demand destruction, and that's never going away. Um, once we do see some realization of a little bit global, little bit better global growth, then, yeah, you'll see some demand pick up, but there's plenty of supply. I don't think you'll see a wild swing to the upside on this. The reality is we want lower prices, and that's what I'd like to see. Lower prices translate to extra money in my pocket. I can go buy things and get my economy rolling. Right now, the OPEC countries are in a precarious state. They need money to go uh, to continue running their countries properly, and they're having trouble doing it. So what they're doing, instead of selling expensive oil, is selling more oil at lower prices. So hopefully that won't happen, but if you're an OPEC producer, you probably want that. Well, if you look at the recent gold and uh, copper prices, they have come off a, off a bit for the most part. Gold was up a bit just because of the fear premium of it. Copper has come down because of the slowdown in world demand. Um, I don't think that's going to be long-lived. Both of these are going to change. Once the fear premium gets out of the market, gold will bounce back up again. Or, gold, excuse me, gold will come back off again. And copper prices will probably start going up again because we have good demand in the U.S. right now for copper. A lot of building going on, a lot more building than there has been in the past. And that's going to create an increase in price there. And the fear premium coming out of the gold market, if in fact the market stabilized some, will cause that price to come down below $1,200 uh, an ounce. Uh, during this week, we have a couple economic numbers they have to pay attention to. You have jobless claims on Thursday. I think this is becoming more and more important. If you look at this thing, the trend over time, jobless claims are going down, which is really good for our economy here. It means more and more people are being employed. Let's see if that trend continues. The other one you have is home sales. Not as big an issue, but let's see what's going on there. Home, home sales uh, create quite a bit to GDP. We'd like to see those start to elevate a bit, and it means there's still a little bit of strength in the economy. But more importantly, we have a lot of economic earnings, excuse me, cor corporate earnings out this week. I want to pay attention to those. So far, the earnings picture has been pretty good for the most part. You've had a couple misses there. But of the people that are beating, they're beating both on the top and bottom lines, and their expectations are pre still pretty solid. So that's what I'll be watching.